Hello everyone, my name is Saif and this is the first video of a series of videos which covers the modeling and simulation of power system components using Simulink MATLAB. In the first couple of videos we are going to model and simulate DC machines. We are going to start with uh, separately excited DC machines. A quick introduction, similar to other rotating machines, a DC machine has a stator and rotor. The stator typically consists of a field winding while the rotor main component is the armature winding. This figure is taken from a book called Electrical Machines while this figure is taken from another book called Dynamic Simulation of Electric uh, Machinery. Our references cited in this video will be presented at the end of the video. Now the field and armature windings may be excited from separate sources, hence it's called separately excited DC machines, or from the same source. In this case it's called self-excited DC machines. In self-excited DC machines, those windings are connected differently to form the basic types of DC machines, such as shunt excited, self excited or combined connected DC machines. It's important to mention that useful magnetic plaques between the stator and rotor produced mainly by the magnetomotive force of the field winding on the stator. Now in figure A, the field winding is fed from external source, which is independent of the armature circuit. In figure B, the field winding is connected in parallel with the armature winding, hence it's shunt connected DC machine. In this case, the field winding current is a function of the armature circuit. Hence, the field winding current is a function of the armature voltage circuit, which is VA. In figure C, the field winding is connected in series with the armature winding, and in this case the machine called seriously connected uh, DC machine. In this case, the field current is a function of armature current. Now in figure D and E, the resultant field voltage are function of both armature voltage and current. Now, in this video and the next couple of videos, we are going to model DC machines, uh, DC motors to be more specific, using three different approaches. The first one is to use the transfer function of the DC motors. The second one is to use the electrical components built-in uh, simulating environment. And the third one is to use the built-in DC machine block, which is available in the DC simulating environment. The third approach would be a good way to validate the first two approaches. Let's start with the first approach. Now, in order to find the transfer function of a system of a linear time invariant system first we have to find the equations that describe that system and then we have to identify the inputs and the output variables the third step would be to take Laplace transform of those equations assuming zero initial conditions now Laplace transform of that system would be the ratio of the output to the input for more information regarding transfer function uh, please check reference number three now let's go and try to apply those rules on uh, the separately excited DC machine. Now the equivalent circuit of separately excited DC machines is shown in figure 3. This circuit is taken from uh, reference number 4. Now the right hand side of this circuit represents the armature winding circuit. Equation number 1 uh, shows the voltage, current, internal resistance and inductance of the armature plus a term which represents the back EMF induced in the armature winding. The other side is the field winding circuit and equation 2 represent uh, this circuit where RF and LF represent the self resistance and inductance of the field winding. Now field winding produce um, the magnetomotive force and the armature winding produce magnetomotive force as well. Those two magnetomotive force are 100 80 degrees electrical degrees uh, displaced and the interaction of those two MMF produces electromagnetic torque shown in equation number three where LIF is a mutual inductance between the field and armature coils. Now it's important to read the electromagnetic torque TE to the system inertia which includes the router and perhaps the load, load inertia plus the damping coefficient associated with the mechanical rotational system the rotating speed and the mechanical load. Now taking Laplace transform for the previously presented equations and rearranging them in terms of the electrical current of the armature and of the field windings in order to show the output variable which is the rotating speed in terms of the field and armature currents in addition to the load torque. The machine parameters used in simulation are taken from reference number 5 and is shown in 
table number one okay so we've used three different approaches the first one is to use transfer function blocks to build the machine model using a blocks diagram the second one is to use components or blocks represent the electrical and mechanical sides of the machine to build the machine using SimScoop library the third one is to use built-in DC machine block to validate the first two approaches now references cited early in this presentation is shown here so I've already started uh, MATLAB now we can start simulating either by writing simulating in the command window or click on simulating button we're choosing a blank model now we'll start together the blocks we need uh, from simulating library browser so from continuous we'd like to have transfer function block more than one from math operations again and multiplication and summation block from sinks we're going to use scoop block to show the output from sources a constant block would be enough to set the input parameters So we are using transfer function blocks to represent the transfer function of the armature, the field windings, in addition to the mechanical side of the machine, presented by the inertia and uh, the friction.
All right, so I've, I've already uh, saved the machine parameters presented in table one and on M file. I just need to run that M file so that those parameters defined in the workspace, just like that. Let's run the model. Great. So this is the first model. Okay, so let's go and build the second one. Now the second model is based on Semiscope library. Right, so this is start gathering the components which represent the electrical side of the machine. and the one which represents the mechanical side as well. Now we'd like to have uh, a two ideal torque sources, one for the electromagnetic torque and the other one to simulate the load torque. Now from utilities, we'd like to have two silvers, one for the electrical side and the other for the mechanical side, in addition to converters from simulating environment to power system environment or semiscope environment and vice versa. All right. Let's first make some room for the second model. Okay, so we need to duplicate this circuit, one for the armature, the other circuit is for the field winding. Now, we are going to use the same signal. 
of the armature voltage feeding the first model to feed the second model and we are doing so for the field winding as well going to borrow those blocks Let's push those components a little bit further. And again, we're going to use the same signal feeding the first model to feed the second one, which is the load torque. okay so let's first go and set the parameters of the electrical side so the resistance the armature resistance and armature self inductance then the field circuit resistance and self inductance the inertia damping coefficient I guess that's all Right. So the final approach is to use the power system specialized technology. Now, Simulink is providing a block which simulate the DC machine performance. We can find it in machines where DC machine again this block can simulate all the 
all types of DC machine. We simply need to rearrange the feed in for the armature and field windings in order to build different types of DC machine. Now we need to feed in the inputs of the machine with signals. We are using the same signal to feed the load torque for the previous two models to feed the third one. So this is the field winding and the armature voltage signal as well. It's just trying to tie up those wires. So the same signal the same signal the voltage applied to the field winding and the voltage applied to the amateur winding are feeding the third model which is using a DC machine block provided by Simulink. Now if we go to the help The DC machine help, we can see that the output of this block is a vector which consists of four signals. The first one is the speed, so we'll have to have a D mixer to decombine the signal going out from this block. But first, let's set the parameters of this DC machine. Now we need a D mixer. It's easier to use search, I guess. With this D mixer, four signals are going out. So the first one is the is the speed. All right, so let's double check to see if we will have the same signal coming from the first, second, and third model. Are they identical? Seems they are. Brilliant. So with doing so, we concluded 
this model. If you're still with us, thank you for watching.